Hey everyone, Leo Kelly G, and it's no secret that I've been a massive John Mayer fan for most of my life at this point. To my mind, he does three things exceptionally well. Number one, he's a great singer. And what I mean by this is that despite not having a particularly wide range as a vocalist, he's able to make the absolute most out of his voice and write melodies which complement it perfectly. Number two, he's a great songwriter. Granted, he does write a lot of love songs which aren't everyone's cup of tea, but he's able to get the balance of relatable, vulnerable, and open just right and create catchy hooks and memorable melodies which make for iconic songs. Number three, he's a great guitarist. Now this kind of goes without saying at this point, but his sense of rhythm, melody and timing are absolutely impeccable and his facility on the instrument allows him to express anything that he wants. But these three things got me thinking, is there a quintessential John Mayer song? What I mean is that if there was someone who had never heard of John Mayer before and you played them this song, they'd understand exactly who John Mayer was as an artist and why he's been able to cultivate such a devoted following over the last 20 years of his music career. The answer is, of course, your body is a wonderland. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's Covered in Rain. I think Covered in Rain puts everything that John Mayer does exceptionally as a musician front and centre and demonstrates why, infamous Playboy interviews and Who You Love by Katy Perry aside, he's one of the best musical minds of his generation. And having now tabbed out the entire song and recorded a note for note tutorial of it, I'd like to talk about why for me, Covered in Rain is the quintessential John Mayer song. Let's get into it. Before we start, if you like these sorts of videos, please be sure to give them a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you stay up to date with all the new videos that I've got coming out. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon, where for only £3 a month you can have access to an increasing number of John Mayer tabs. The whole of Room for Squares is up there and the whole of Any Given Thursday will soon be up there as well. I also upload Guitar Pro tabs, which lets you go through the tab and listen back to what the tab sounds like, isolate the instruments and also change the tempo so you can adjust it to where you like it. Because I use a lot of licensed music in my content to make tutorials, a lot of the videos that I make get demonetized. That's a hit that I'm willing to take for you guys to make the best tutorials that I possibly can. And so if you do enjoy the content that I make, your support on Patreon would really be appreciated. Right, now that's out of the way. Let's get on with the video. As I said at the start of the video, I think John Mayer does three things exceptionally well. He's a great singer, he's a great songwriter, he's a great guitar player. And so in this video, I wanted to break down each of these individual aspects to explain how for me, Covered in Rain is the quintessential John Mayer song. I think John Mayer as a singer is conceptually very interesting because if you try to describe the timbre of his voice to someone who hasn't heard it, it sounds kind of awful, but it just works. Hey, have you heard of John Mayer? No. What does he sound like? Kind of breathy, nasal, and sort of raspy at the same time? Ugh. No, listen to this. Holy crap! But irrespective of the timbre of John Mayer's voice itself, I think the way that he uses it is very skillful. When John Mayer sings, he has a real talent for melodic variation. Every time he sings the same melody, he adds these little changes, riffs and runs, which make each line a little bit different. There's also a really raw quality to his voice, which doesn't come out all that often, but you hear it just before the last chorus in Covered in Rain. <laughs> And I think it sounds really nice. Again, I think there are songs where John Mayer is singing better. I think Where the Light Is is probably the best he's ever sounded vocally, but I think that Covered in Rain shows off what he's able to do with his voice in a really comprehensive way. Covered in Rain is ostensibly about the autumn of a relationship that isn't working anymore. The world has gotten colder and the couple don't go out as much as they used to. Ordering in instead of going out for dinner and trading fireworks for fireplaces. Come winter, they come to an understanding that although it's incredibly painful, it's for the best that they go their separate ways. Covered in Rain is actually a foil to the song City Love, which details the beginning of the same relationship. Stolen shirts and toothbrushes left behind after staying over, culminating in an alcohol fueled near proposal in the street at two o'clock in the morning and Lydia showing up covered in rain at his apartment. However, there's a subtext to this song, which I missed the first few times I listened through to the lyrics, which is the backdrop of 9-11 and the feeling that gripped New York after September 2001. The missing signs at the CVS, the reluctance to go outside, and the world just generally feeling less friendly and more animus. And so Covered in Rain is actually a metaphor for the gloom and depression felt after 9-11. And the song is telling the story of a broken relationship trying to survive in a broken world. The brightest thing he's got, while everything else around him feels like it's falling apart, but which in the end isn't enough of a reason to stay together. Okay, so conceptually, this song is great. It's still a love song. Song. It's John Mayer after all. But the way that he's able in so few words to capture the feeling of post 9-11 New York and paint a picture of a relationship that isn't working anymore and find common ground between the two is absolutely amazing. To me, it's really reminiscent of some of Paul Simon's songs like Question for the Angels, where he's able to anchor a feeling to a place and then find parallels between the two. Lyrically, this song is also phenomenal. The parallel between having a piece missing out of your silhouette because you're alone again and the piece missing out of the New York skyline if you're facing west from Manhattan is pure genius. If I pitch the idea of a song about a relationship that wasn't working anymore and tried to link that to the feeling of 9-11 and the general feeling of gloom in New York City post-2001, I'm not sure I'd be able to reconcile those two thoughts in my head. And yet somehow, it just works. Lyrically, this is John Mayer at his best. Taking the basic idea of a breakup song but then adding a much deeper layer of meaning underneath that is absolutely top-tier songwriting and shows why Covered in Rain is the quintessential John Mayer song. 
Covered in Rain only has two chords and is ten and a half minutes long, which on the surface sounds like it could be quite tedious. But it's what John Mayer is able to do with these two chords that makes this song so special and why for me, this is the quintessential John Mayer song. What's fantastic about John Mayer's playing in Covered in Rain and his songwriting in general is the interest he's able to generate by creating a simple but ambiguous harmonic backdrop which is open to interpretation through the use of musical extensions. An extension is essentially taking a basic triad and then adding notes on top of it to make the harmony more layered, more textured and more interesting. If I take an E flat major chord, which is the four chord in our chord progression, I have E flat, G and B flat in that chord. Now that gives us some harmonic information in that we have a major triad, but if I add a D on top of that chord as a major seventh, you can already hear that the harmony becomes more interesting and it gives the chord a whole new vibe and a whole sort of different feeling that it didn't have before. And I can add extension upon extension upon extension on these chords to make the harmony even more complex and even more interesting. In the intro, the verses and the choruses of Covered in Rain, instead of just playing a simple E flat major to B flat major, he plays an E flat major nine chord to a B flat six nine chord which deepens the harmony and gives it a much more wistful, longing kind of vibe than basic major triads are able to do. And so instead of just thinking about the chords as being major, he's extending the harmony and adding interest. As a contrast to this, in the main part of the solo, he combines B flat major and B flat minor pentatonic licks over both chords, which suggests that he's now looking at the chords as dominant seventh chords, as opposed to the major chords that he was looking at earlier. So in the last part of the solo, he plays which suggests that he's using an E flat dominant nine kind of sound as opposed to the E flat major nine that he was using earlier. I think John Mayer is at his best when he's playing over a simple one or two chord vamp and is able to just let loose and extend and mold the harmony in whichever way he chooses to. Some other great examples of exactly the same thing as this in John Mayer's music are Gravity, which goes the opposite way from one to four in G major. I guess I just feel like, which goes from one to four in B major. Come Back to Bed, which goes from one to four in A major. And Last Train Home, which goes from one to four in E major. And I think Covered in Rain is one of the best examples of this. I think John Mayer is one of the most complete guitar players that I've ever come across. His lead playing, sense of melody, rhythm, timing, note choices and chord choices are all absolutely impeccable and I think Covered in Rain is the song that shows the best of all of these skills. As I said before, theoretically the song is quite simple. We're essentially going from a four chord with a given extension to a one chord with a given extension. If I was just going to play these two chords they sound nice by themselves but it's the way he arpeggiates these chords and has these little percussive slaps slides that make it sound uniquely John Mayer. You can also hear it in the section afterwards where he plays these little riffs and runs around the chords that have a wonderful little call and answer response to them that again is absolutely fantastic and just uniquely John Mayer sounding. If we take this riff from the picking section There's call and response in there, there's wonderful interplay between his thumbs and his fingers, and the way that he's constantly shifting and moving the harmony around is just oh, chef's kiss. Fantastic. It's no secret that John Mayer is a massive fan of Steve Ray Vaughan, B.B. King and Jimi Hendrix, and he wears these influences on his sleeve in this solo. The whole thing is like a roadmap of his influences unfolding as the solo progresses, and it's absolutely fantastic. The start of the solo is Straight Out of Life Without You by Steve Ray Vaughan. And the lick that follows as well is just pure Steve Ray Vaughan goodness. Also modulating between the major and the minor pentatonic of the same key is very reminiscent of Steve Ray Vaughan. As the solo carries on, he then moves into the BB King box. And plays some choice BB King licks, which are straight out of Live at the Regal. After he's done with BB King, we then move on to some heavily influenced Hendrixian lead slash rhythm playing. which is straight out of songs like Boulder's Love and The Wind Cries Mary. What's nice about this solo, however, is that once he's done tipping his hat to his heroes, he then starts using vocabulary that's all his own. It's still inspired by Steve Ray Vaughan, BB King and Jimi Hendrix, in that you can see that he's definitely looking at the neck the same way as they do, but he's finding his own places to go within that framework. Like this lick. It's just 
pure John Mayer. I also think that what John Mayer does that his precursors didn't do quite as much is that he uses a lot more of the major scale in his soloing. There are a couple of times when he really lingers on the second and the seventh notes of the scale. They give his playing a melodic quality in a different way than Steve Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix and BB King. You can also hear this in the Hendrixian lead rhythm hybrid playing in the first part of the solo. Whereas with Jimi Hendrix, you might hear him play a perfect fourth of the fifth and the root on top and then hammering onto the major sixth to create a triad, or the second and the fifth as a perfect fourth and then hammering onto the third as a triad. John Mayer takes it one step further and takes the perfect fourth of the sixth and the second and then hammers onto the major seventh as a triad as well. And so instead of just having this, which you'd hear from Jimi Hendrix, with John Mayer you hear, And so it extends the harmony in a way that you don't often hear Jimi Hendrix play in the same sort of way. And this is definitely something that I think is worth taking into consideration in your own playing as well. By all means, learn from the guitar players you idolize, borrow their licks and understand how they look at the neck, but use them as a springboard and try and bring something new to the table. Finally, the last leg of the solo is just amazing. <laughs> it took me something like 117 takes to get that part down cleanly when I was recording the tutorial. It is so hard to play that fast and that clean and with that much feel and he does it effortlessly. I think I was watching a Justin Hawkins video where he was sort of criticising John Mayer saying that he plays it a bit safe considering how good a guitar player he actually is. But I think it's that restraint that makes the moments that he does let loose even more special. It also just makes you want to play along as well. I've never listened to a John Mayer solo and said to myself there's no way that I can play that. It's all just really playable but it's that playability that you hear in John Mayer's music that you don't hear with a lot of other guitar players. He just makes you want to go and grab a guitar and start playing and I think that's a really powerful thing to be able to do when you write guitar music. I think there are more iconic John Mayer songs than Covered in Rain where you could argue that the guitar playing is technically better or that it's faster but I think Covered in Rain has the combination of everything that makes John Mayer John Mayer, his influences, his take on the influences, all perfectly combined in one track and for me that's what makes Covered in Rain the quintessential John Mayer song. And so that was my video on why I think that Covered in Rain is the quintessential John Mayer song. I wanted to try and switch up the format this time and try and talk about some things that aren't entirely guitar related. I think a lot of the reason that people enjoy guitar playing and they think guitar playing is good is the context that that guitar playing actually appears in. And so I wanted to delve a bit more into the context and the background of the playing to flesh out exactly why a piece of music that has guitar in it is so good. And so if you'd like to see more of these types of videos, then do let me know in the comment section. Once again, be sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to help grow the channel. Subscribe to my Patreon for tabs and I will see you in the next next video. There's the hat logo in the middle. I don't sneeze. Kin. King. BB King. We then move on to some heavily influenced. Influenced. It's still inspired by Steve Ray Vaughan, Jimmy King and Jimmy King. Covered in Rain is essentially, essentially, culminating, <laughs> culminating, culminate, culminate, culminating, quintetenta, quintetenta, <laughs>